Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning Palestine United Methodist Church. Good morning, Facebook Live. Amen. It's a good day to be alive. Amen. Amen. It's good to see everyone here this morning. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. Waiting to be prayed. Amen. We're, if you notice, I got my mask on this morning. Amen. I've been uh, looking and listening to uh, local and national news. And the COVID is on the rise again. Amen. Hospitalization is on the rise. But uh, it's not being publicized and televised like it was. It's up to us to get the word out to one another and try to uh, protect one another. I wear my mask for your protection because uh, I be around a lot of people, amen. And just like today when I go out in the community and do communion, I will have my mask on then. But I, I will do it to protect those who I serve. And uh, I would, uh, it's just for your protection. I'm not trying to say you need one. If you prefer to wear one, it's on you. If you prefer not to, it's on you still. So uh, just be aware that uh, COVID is on the rise again. I don't think it never went anywhere myself. But it's a good day to be alive. That means that we still got another chance and another opportunity to get it right. Amen. I thank God for uh, another chance to stand before God's people. And, and this is the last holiday weekend of the summer, the last summer holiday, I can say that. Labor Day, it, it slipped up on me. Uh, I heard people talking about it, and I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. So I finally just sit down and looked at the calendar and, and realized that, oh man, this is the last holiday of the summer. This is the almost officially end of the summer by date, but not by the weather because the weatherman says it's going to get extremely hot again next week. So the hot weather ain't gone, y'all. Right. The air conditioning got to be cut on a little while longer. Amen. Amen. Right now, we are, before we get started, we, we, uh, we allow those who have a, a testimony, uh, those who have something that they want to bring to the attention of the church uh, to give them a moment right now because uh, if I'm not mistaken, said by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony is how we make it over. You never know who uh, going through the same thing you're going through. And to hear you speak it out of their, your mouth you know, lets them know that hey, if you still standing, they can be still standing also. So if there's anyone here this morning with a testimony, now is the time. All right, Ms. Harris.
we're larger than some of the storefront churches. God has blessed us with this, this portion of this building that we are able to worship him. Amen. So hey, don't feel like you got to sit all on one side. You can come up either way you want to do it. I just wanted to put that out there. Amen. All right. Anything else? Call to worship. This is our 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Amen. In year eight. Our color is still green. It hasn't changed yet. Amen. And uh, we have our scriptures, references over to the right hand of the, this paper. And uh, uh, as I say from week to week, go back and read your scriptures that are listed. They all have a theme of running, tying everything in together. It's a theme. They all go hand in hand with one another uh, with what's going to be preached today also. You could go to each one of those scriptures and probably use the same text uh, for all of those scriptures. Uh, so let's keep your, your hand out and go home and, and use them this week. Maybe only in the, in the future as we get closer to operating back 100%, we can go back to our, our old, our regular bulletins, amen, and uh, we can start uh, conferring on who wants to, how many interested in our Sunday school, starting it back, because this is, it's vital to our growth also, amen. Uh, uh, Bible study, we're still doing it on Wednesday night, uh, and it's it's vital. Our, our ministries here at the church, our small groups, it's vital to us. It's, it, it helps us in our growth. So uh, if you're interested in uh, Sunday school and, and Bible study, we need to get together and talk about it, and maybe we can get uh, our uh, uh, some kind of way that we can order our books. They are very expensive. So those who are going to participate need to participate. Amen. But call to worship. I will be the light coloring writing and you are the dark color. Man, Amen. followers of Christ, God calls us just as we are to live as truth tellers and gospel bringers in the world. Like Moses standing before the burning bush convinced of his unworthiness to lead your people out of bondage, we ask. Like Peter, who thought he got it right only to realize that who Jesus is doesn't meet his expectations of who a Savior should be, we ask. As we raise this question to God today, we open our hearts to receive God's answer. You are my beloved children. You are my disciples. You, you are, are my people. Call to share the love of God, God for the transformation of the, of the world. world. Amen. Amen. Our affirmation of faith found on page 881. But before we ask, let's go to Psalm 885. I mean, Psalm 105. It's found on page in our hymn. I'll give you the page. Hold on. Page 828. 
Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. The Bible says, The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Right now, if I could just get this congregation to raise up them holy hands and give God a praise right now, Give him the praises that he deserves. If he inhabits the praises of his people, and we are God's people, somebody ought to be praising God with me right now. I'm going to be like the old preacher used to say, if I have to praise him all by myself, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Lord, you pick me up and set my feet on a solid rock. So I can stand, yes. I can stand, yes. and I can stand. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. we come Jesus. believing this morning that nothing is too hard for you. Yes. Lord, all things are possible yes. with you. Because you are the all-powerful, yes. all-knowing, all-seeing, everywhere at the same time, God. You are our God. You sit high and you look low, nothing get out of your eyesight. You preserve us from all evil. You preserve our going out and our coming back in. Lord, you give us no fear this morning. We feel no man. We feel no thing. We feel no disease. We feel nothing because you are our God, and you look over us, and you preserve us, and we thank you, Lord, today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you told us that we are the head and not the tail. And we believe that, Lord. Lord, we believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper this morning and no other day. Father God, we thank you that you told us that we would do greater works. Father God, we thank you that as we go through this time that we're going through, Lord, that we remember your word for us to be steadfast. You told us to be immovable, always abounding in your word, knowing that what we're laboring for this morning is not in vain. We thank you, Lord, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So we believe right now. We believe that nothing it's impossible for you, Lord. Father God, all the names that have been called, no matter what they're going through, you can fix it because nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Father God, you, you, you raised the dead to life again. We know that Lazarus was dead in the, in, in the tomb for four days. And you came and you, you lifted him up. Yes. Father God, there is some dead stuff in here right now, Lord. We want you to lift it up right now and call it out, Lord, that it will be alive in you once again. Father God, we thank you right now. All the names that have been called. You know every need. You know every situation. And we believe right now that it's already done. We believe right now, Lord, that you already have went before and prospered all of our ways. We believe it right now. How we believe it right now? Because we are all witnesses to the things that you have done in our lives. And we thank you right now that we will continue to tell somebody about Jesus. Because you are God, and you are God all by yourself. And you are worthy of all our prayer. 
And we praise you for answering our prayer this morning. And if you agree with me this morning, as we close out, let's give the Lord some praises one more time. Hallelujah. God is a good God. He's waiting to be praised. Out. Could I get a song? From somebody this morning. Come on, son.
But also I look at the different versions and I, I like to read those also. Verse 21, Matthew the 16th chapter reads, from then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed and be raised the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh, no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned and told Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me because you're not thinking about God concerns, but human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will find it. For what will it benefit someone if he gains the whole world yet loses his life? Or what will anyone give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is, is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will reward each according to what he has done. Yes. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to talk just for a minute. Take up your cross. Take up your cross. If you were here or you listening to us last week, uh, in last week's sermon, we talked about a question that Jesus asked his first disciple. You remember that? Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and do you remember I suggested last week that that question is a question for all believers of Jesus to ask. Yeah. Not just the first disciple, but for us today. Yeah. But I, I want you to look at another crucial question to our walk of faith. And, and I want you to ask yourself this morning, what does it mean to follow Jesus? We get a statement that answers that question very clear. And God, uh, he, he, the Bible makes it very clear, but it's a, a very challenging way. It's a way that challenges us all Jesus said, if you want to become my follower, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Now, 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 the cross back in the Roman time was a joke. It, it wasn't a, a pretty piece of uh, a jewelry that we wear around our neck, on our wrists and everything. As a matter of fact, it, a cross meant that you were ostracized. Okay. Amen. Uh, the cross meant that you was afraid. It, it was, it was a, a, a form of keeping you pushed down. Amen. And it, it was nothing to be glorified. Amen. But today, a cross, you see them all jury on everybody's walls and everything. It's completely a different thing now. But back in the Roman day, that cross meant oppression. It meant you was oppressed. So today, I just want to look at this. 
What it means to be a follower of Jesus. What it means to be a, a, a baptized Christian. And, and this statement that Jesus gave us, it has three disciplines in it. You know what the discipline is, though. It's part of what we need to do to become a disciple of God. Right. And, and the first discipline is deny yourself. Jesus teaches first to deny ourselves. Deny ourselves. That's not a popular thing in this day and age. Not in the world we live in. Denying yourself won't win you the governor's race. It won't. Denying yourself won't win. You won't win the supervisor race, whatever you're running for. As a matter of fact, denying yourself, I believe that the only place it's heard of is in the church. You can go Google, YouTube, or whatever and find. I, I believe that the only the, the teaching, the only video you'll find of denying yourself will be about Jesus Christ. Because ain't nobody here this morning going to deny yourself. I, I, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe nobody here going to deny themselves. But I want to talk just a minute about denying yourself. I want you to understand what Jesus was talking about when he said deny yourself. And, and I, I also want to know that, uh, want you to know that when you deny yourself, that means that you got to deny that false self. Uh-oh, we talking about real. We got some false self. What you mean by that, bro? It's that self in us that's governed by the world standards. It's that self in us that, 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 that think you got to be successful to be happy. Yeah. It's that self that believes that the, that, that the one of us who have the most toys is the one that wins. Somebody know what I'm talking about. It's that self that's in us that 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 like things like more money, more power, like more pleasure, bigger houses, bigger car, bigger bond. This is the false self that we all carry along, around in us, and only when we deny it can we become. True selves to ourselves. Okay. Say that. Say that. Only can we become the people that God created us to be when we deny the false self. We don't have to be anything different than what we truly are. But we would never discover and accept who we are truly until we deny that false one inside. Yeah, it's, it ain't that wrong to want nice stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting a nice house and nice clothes and everything. But when we allow it to be before Jesus, yes. we got to deny that self. Yes. That's right. Jesus telling us this morning, this is one of the first steps to follow him. You can't follow Jesus in your midst. You, you got to let that go. You got to get rid of it. Jesus telling us to deny yourself. That is the first act of discipleship. He then goes on and said, take up your cross. If any want to become my follower, Jesus said, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and fall in me. Now, if denying yourself is so unpopular, then how about taking up your cross this morning? Some of you may be saying, what do you mean? Well, one thing I learned over the last 20 years as being a pastor is that not all crosses that we take up 
a voluntary cross. Sometimes a cross is placed on our shoulders that we didn't ask for. Amen. What you mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. Somebody listening this morning, somebody here over the last few weeks, we got a positive COVID test. Somebody got an a, 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 a unsettling health diagnosis. The doctor walked in and told you something that you didn't want to hear. Some of us are still suffering over the death of a loved one. Some of us lost a job that was keeping food on our table. These sometimes to me are the crosses that we don't ask for. But I do know when we accept them, we got to trust God to be with us through them. Yes. Yes. And I believe that when we accept them and we trust God to be with us, we're taking up our cross. Yes. I believe we're taking up our cross. Yes. And, and I want you to understand, it's not a punishment from God. Mm. But when we can accept them, we begin to see God working through them. See, sometimes it takes a sickness to bring us back around. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Sometimes it takes us to lose everything we got to gain Jesus in our life. I don't know why it be like that sometimes, but we have to be real low. Low as we can go before we can say, Jesus, here I am. See, I've been convinced that some of the crosses that we 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 have to take take up changes over the period of time. Yeah. Yeah. See, London, the cross that you ask right now to take up as a young person is a very different cross that you will be asked to take up when you get older. Right. Yeah. See, right now, London, as a young person, your cross may be standing up to your friends who don't believe That's right. that Jesus is a popular thing. It, it, it might mean saying no to those friends. And, and it may even mean that it threatens your friendship with them. Okay. But when they're gone, Jesus will put more friends in your pile, right? Okay. There's somebody here this morning that know that when they married, that was a cross. Yeah. See, because when you married that person, that meant that you had to put your spouse needs and interests before yours. Right. See, some of us forget that the Bible said when a man found a wife, he finds a good thing. So if we just switch it over, when a woman finds a husband, she finds a good thing. But those are crosses that we have to bear. Crosses that we have to take along with us on our journey. I, I believe, Brother Ben, right now, there wouldn't be nothing in the world that would change from you carrying that cross for uh, Pastor Burke. I believe, Pastor Bert, there is nothing in the world that would change for you carrying that cross for Ben. Right. You know what it said? When we took them vows and said, in sickness yes. and in health, yes. and they ain't all been good days since yes. Exodus. Right. There been some real tough days. Yes. There been some days when I wanted to throw the towel in. Yes. But I thought about Jesus. Yeah. And I thought about how good he'd been to me. Yeah. And I thought about I wasn't carrying the cross by myself. He was right there with me. Yeah. I thought about him carrying the cross with me. Yeah. Jesus said, we got to take up our crosses. Yes. Yes. And I realized that crosses change. Change as we, we age. Sometimes a cross carrying means that you have to give up your independence. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm, I drive everywhere by myself. I live by myself. I, I, I cook dinner and everything by myself. But sometimes you will get to a point where you won't be able to drive. That's right. You won't be able to cook your own That's meal. Right. You won't be able to do all these That's things right. that you used to do by yourself. I don't know who I'm talking to now. But you're going to have to learn to humble yourself. Right. And you're going to have to rely on others to help you. Right. Let somebody help you. God put them in your path to help you carry these crosses. Crosses are not always voluntary. That's right. But they mean that it's a part to follow Jesus. That's right. I believe it's all right to accept them gracefully, humbly, yes. and uh, last, courageously. Mm -hmm. You got to accept the cross. Yes. You got to trust Jesus. Amen. And you got to follow him. Yes. And sometimes when you do this, you will be telling the world much more about what you believe than any words that you could say. Yes. The life that you live will speak for you. Oh, you ain't got to get up there and try to change nobody's mind with right. your word. That's right. All you got to do is live a life pleasing to God. That's it. In our handout this morning, you see the scriptures at the top. I want you to turn with me right quick. I, I, I want to read a part of the scripture. Uh, I, I, like I said, that most of the time it's theme based. Romans. Go to a group of Romans. Romans is the 12th chapter. I want to read that right quick. If I can find it. John Act 1. All right. Romans 12. I want to read verses 9 through 21. Romans 12. 9 through 21. It reads, Let love be without hypocrisy. Okay. Detest evil. Cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Y'all hear that? Paul wrote in verse 12, rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. See, if that cross that you are being asked to take up is an involuntary one, this verse might just speak to you. I'm here this morning to ask you, can you find a way to rejoice in hope? Despite what you're going through, despite your suffering, can you find joy in the hope of the gospel? Can you find joy in the promise of eternal life? Somebody this morning got a diagnosis and said you wasn't going to get no better. Somebody got a, a, a diagnosis this morning and said, you're going to hurt to the end. Can you be patient this morning in your suffering? And can you persevere in your prayer? See, that's part of this discipleship. That's part of, of knowing who Jesus is in your life. Because, see, something that we're going through, we know that it's going to be a different end. Yes. 
It ain't going to be happily ever after on this side. It may be happily ever after on, on the other side. But can you rejoice in that hope? And while you're going through, can you be patient in your suffering? You ever heard of somebody say, all the time he was on his sick bed, never said a mom in word. Didn't complain about it. All he ever did was ask, pray for me. See, this is what Paul is telling us. This is what Jesus is telling us this morning. This is what it's going to take for us to be followers of Jesus Christ. Then he goes on and said, contribute to the needs of the saints. To extend hospitality to strangers. And see, right now, as I look in the congregation, I, I, I don't see nobody's life just tore up from the floor up. If it is, you ain't let it know. Amen. I, 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 don't, I don't see nobody in the congregation that's tore up from the floor. And, 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 but I do know that there are some people in the community that's tore up from the floor. Need help. We know they need help. Amen over there. There's some families over there that need help. And we know they need help. It's rolling fork. Florida just had a hurricane roar through. The Bible tells us to contribute to the needs of the saints. We, 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 that's something else that you can be doing. You can, you can send five dollars to some one of those places that support food pantries and everything like that. You might say, "Well, Reb, I'm, I'm already paying my tithe." Well, good. God gonna honor you for that. He gonna He gonna bless you back. Pick up a ministry of doing something in the community that's helping other people. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Contribute to the needs of the people. You somebody gonna say, "Well, they ought to be saving their own money." Yeah, that's true. But when I put it right here, it's on them. They do with what they want to do with. It. What they say they for be doing with it, it's on them. But I have contributed to them. Start helping people out. Start extending your hospitality. Not just to people you you know, to strangers. You, you may be helping an angel unknowingly. That's what the Bible said. This is part of following Jesus, y'all. That may be your cross right now. That you help people in your own community. Right. And, and we don't have to go that far. You can help people in your own family. That's right. You know some family members that's struggling right now? Yes, you know, you I ain't getting them no money. Well, go buy them some food. <laughs> Do something for them. This is part of following Jesus. Yes. Paul goes on and says in Romans, if it is possible, as so far as it is to depend on you, to live peaceably with all. Well, Joe, that's a good enough. Right now, all you see is Republicans against Democrats. Right now, all you see is neighbor against neighbor. What would it take for us to live peaceably among each other? Right here in this church. What would it take for us to live peaceably among each other? Can you disagree with somebody and live peaceably? See, but we have had disagreement and now we're public enemy number one to one another. In order for us to be followers of Jesus, we can't live like that, y'all. Right. The Bible says that we got to live peaceably together. This world is hell bound. It's so much confusion now. 
And so they're throwing bricks at each other. And, and I, I, I ain't picking on nobody. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Amen. I seen a commercial say, if you're scared, say you're scared. <laughs> See it on TV. Oh I seen the commercial say you're just a almost a bold bay liar. Come on now. We dragging each other. We, uh, it, it don't take all of that. Amen. See, we look at the things around us and it really show us what the world is looking like. And if you look a little further, you'll find a lot more things. That's right. The truth about it is, we don't know what cross that we're being asked to bear now. I'm getting ready to go. But I do know that there's a cross that is yours. That's right. I do know that there's a cross that no one else can bear. That's right. I know there was a cross that was only for Jesus. That's right. There was a cross that was only for his first disciple. Mm. I know this morning that there's a cross for me. Yes. And I know this morning that there's a cross for you. Okay. And I know that if you want to follow Jesus this morning, okay. I know that you got to take up your cross. Yes. I know that you got to pick it up. Yes. And I know that you got to carry it. Yes. And then the third discipline that Jesus said, he said, when you pick that cross up, Jesus said, follow me. But as we do this, we choose to take up our cross. We got to do it in knowing that Jesus said that in order for the preparation of getting to the eternal life that he has promised, we got to pick up our own cross. That's right. When Jesus is leading us, though, when we pick up the cross, That's right. we got to deny ourselves. That's it. We got to take our cross. That's right. We got to follow Jesus, but we got to let Jesus lead us. Yes. Jesus got to lead us. Yes. He got to lead us all the way That's it. from earth. Come on now. That's right. To glory. That's what the songwriter said. Let Jesus lead you all the way. That's what we got to do. We can't let Jesus lead us half of the way. He got to lead us all the way. And if you look in your Bible, you will find out that that's an invitation that Jesus already has made to us. He said, that all that are weary. Hallelujah. Anybody weary this morning? Yes. He said all that are carrying heavy burdens. Yes. Jesus invited you to come to him this morning. Yes. And he said he will give you rest. Anybody need some rest this morning? Yes. He said take my yoke and learn from me. We, we got to learn from him y'all. See, uh, it's time for us to learn from Jesus. He said his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I need some easy yokes this day. I need some light burdens in my life. Jesus said, come with me and follow me. And this is what I will give you. Could this cross that he is asking us to Take up. Could it be our yoke, Joe? Yeah? Could denying ourselves be our yoke, y'all? Yeah? When we're yoked with Jesus, we no longer do whatever we want to do. We deny ourselves. And we are taking up this burden, this cross. We're taking it up, y'all. And we're not carrying it by ourselves. Jesus takes it with us. I don't know about you, but that makes my cross bearable. I don't know about you, that makes my heavy load light. 
I don't know about you. I can shout, thank you, Jesus, this morning. I don't know about you. I can say that I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't know about you. I can say this morning, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for picking that up. Thank you for picking me up. Thank you for carrying me. Thank you for making a way out of no way for me. Thank you for being out when they walked out on me. Thank you for feeding me. Thank you for giving me a drink when I was thirsty. Jesus, I thank you for being Jesus. I just want to close saying when I allowed Jesus in my life, I found life. See, when I allowed Jesus in my life, I found life. I found life. And when I found Jesus led life, it led to a life of hope. Now, I done told you about that hope before. Yes. I done told you about I was a grandmama's child. Yes. That hope word had a lot of meaning, different meaning to me. Yes. My grandmama used to say, Marie, okay. come in here and hope me, boy. Yes. That's all right. That means a helping hand. Yes. I found out that this hope of Jesus is a helping hand in my life now. That hope word is a lot meaning to me. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes. Right now, this morning, I want to thank God for each and every person here this morning. Yes. And I want yes. each and every person to know this morning that the call on your life yes. is a personal call. Yes. I can't answer. Yes. You got to answer. Yes. And believe it or not, He's calling every one of us here this morning. There's a call on everybody's life. It may not be a call to preach, but it's a call. Amen. I want to thank God for Jesus, and I want to thank God for Palestine United Methodist Church. I want to thank God for your resilience. Yeah. Some of you have resilience and you don't even know about it. Yeah. God has put that resilience inside of you. And no matter, you done made up your mind, you, 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 you're coming through this. Yes. You're going to get through this. You're coming through to the other side. But guess what? Yes. Jesus is leading you all the way. Oh. Come on, sir. Get up us pray. What did he say? Follow me. Pick up your cross. Deny, he said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross. And follow me. Laid it out for you. That's all we got to do. Amen. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Go back this week. And read the rest of your scriptures. Amen. You'll find out that they all theme based. Amen. I, I looked at the scripture text this morning, uh, this week, uh, that is listed in Exodus about Moses. You know, uh, we all get so familiar with stories that we done heard. We will miss out on what God is actually saying to the soul and the spirit. Amen. And as I was reading this week, and I'm, I'm going to get ready for our communion, I read something about Moses in the burning bush that I had never really just looked at. You know, and, 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 and Moses <laughs> ministry was, and life was cut into 40 year increments. 40, 80, 120. Every 40 years, there was something that exemplifies of God that he could sit down and stone in his life. Uh, he was out. He had left out of Pharaoh's house because of him killing one of his soldiers. He was 40 years old. 
he went out in the land of Midian for 40 years. That's where he was. He was 80 when the burning bush, God called him and he got his attention. But, you know, when the thing about it was when God called him, God got his attention not by the call. He didn't get us sitting around saying, uh, Moses, Moses. He got his attention by the bush burning. Yeah. If it would have been waiting on the Moses, Moses, he would have never answered. Because the call speaking to him never got his attention. When he seen that bush burning in the middle of the desert and wasn't burning up, that's when he stopped. He said, Let me go over here and see what this is right here. I ain't never okay. seen shit. And once the Lord got his attention through the burning bush, that's when he said, Moses, Moses. God is trying to get somebody's attention in here on that. With their binding bush. He's trying to get your attention with the things that's going on around you in your Amen. life right now. Amen. And if you stop for a moment and begin to look at it, I guarantee you hear the call of the Lord calling your name out of whatever right now is trying to pull you. Moses came up with all kind of excuses. You full of excuses too. Yeah. When God calls you and you realize He called you, you're going to come up with some excuses. But I told you myself, no, uh -huh. I can't do this. You know what my excuses were? My wife ain't going to hear that. Amen. Ain't <laughs> hey, the first thing she said. Man, how do you feel the Lord done called you to preach? You done did everything but die. And you know what? I went to open my mouth and argue with him. And the Lord said, shut up. You just do what I tell you to do and I'll handle her. And now she try to preach more than I do. Amen. 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 We got the Listen Amen. to the call. Lord is calling us all. Amen. And you know what? He calling somebody in here to be teachers, preachers. Yeah. Got some singers. Yeah, we got all that in here. Whatever it takes to equip this church. Amen. God already done called. What you got to do is walk in it. Yeah. Right. You got to say, here I am, Lord. Yeah. And watch and see. Don't be scared. Yeah. I just told you he going to be with you. Yes. Amen. Amen. 